what are these pieces of data? I mean, the first one is obviously an IP address, right? Second one looks to me like a UNC. Uh, looks like the third one is probably a, a, an HTTP URL, right? Um, the fourth one, probably an email address. And the fifth one looks like an NT domain credential to me, right? Well, how did you know that's what they were? Now, see, we people, we're clever. We recognize different types of data based on the data's format. Now, none of those pieces of data we just looked at might be valid. I don't know that that IP address was any good. I don't know that that email address was any good. I don't know that the domain credential was actually a real one. That's not what we were looking at, though. We were just looking at the format of the data. So a regular expression is a way of describing a format to a computer so that the computer can tell if data matches that format or not. Now, there's a difference here between format and validity, right? 256.345.98.54 looks like an IP address. It's in the right format for one, right? It's got four sets of digits. There's no more than three digits. They're separated by periods. But it's not a valid IP address. So, you know, uh, let's take another example. Um, Don at noplace.com. Is that a valid email address? No, well, I don't know. Go try it. Whoever owns the noplace.com domain will get upset. The point is it looks like an email address if you're just validating the format. So regular expressions are a way of describing formats to a computer. And this allows PowerShell itself to recognize when data matches that format. So it allows you to reject data which does not match your desired format. Let's say you're writing a script which is going to accept an email address or a username. These things have to match your corporate standards. A regular expression is a way for your script to validate the format, if not the validity, of the data before it continues. A PowerShell does this with what it calls its regular expression or regex operators. Dash match and dash not match are case insensitive operators. Add a little C to the front, C match and C not match are case sensitive operators. And there's also an I match and an I not match, which are case insensitive. And you see an example here of how to use those. Give it a string, give it the operator, like dash match, and then give it the regular expression that you want to test for. And it will tell you if that string matches that regular example. Here are some simple regular expression examples. I'm going to use the regular expression Don, and I want you to note how the regular expression floats across the string to obtain a match. Pteranodon matches because it ends in Don. Donna matches because it begins in Don. But having Don in the middle of the string also creates a match. The only time you'll get a false is if the sequence of letters D-O-N aren't in the string at all, as is the case with Chris. Of course, the not match operator reverses the logic, indicating that Chris does indeed not match Don. Here are some simple matches. Donald does match Don, because Don occurs within the string. Kingdom does match ing, because the pattern ing is in the string kingdom. Tweet tweet matches ee, because it did find the string ee within that. If you look at dollar sign matches, though, we'll see that it only matched the first EE, not the second one. Donald match uppercase Don is true because by default the match operator is not case sensitive. Donald C match Don is false because the C match operator is case sensitive. Big not match little is true because the L I T T L E pattern does not occur within the string. B -I -G. The ability of regular expressions to float across a string to obtain a match is the number one most difficult things in getting the perfect regex pattern. You can use two special anchor characters to stop the float, forcing matches to occur at the beginning or end of a string. My first example is false because Don doesn't occur at the beginning of the string, and the caret character anchors the match to the beginning. The second example is true, because I've used the dollar sign to anchor the match to the end of the string, which is where the match occurs. The third example anchors both the start and end of the string, meaning the string Don is the only possible match here. Finally, the last example is true, because the match occurs at the beginning of the string, which is where I've anchored it 
using the caret character. Matching literal characters obviously has very limited use, and so most regular expressions make extensive use of wildcards. Three basic wildcard characters are supported. A period matches any single character, that is, exactly one character. A star matches zero or more instances of whatever character came before it. A question mark matches zero or one instance of the preceding character. If you need to match a literal period, star, or question mark, simply precede that character with a backslash. That's the escape character for regular expressions. By the way, if you need to match a literal backslash, such as in a UNC or a file path, simply precede it with another backslash. Or in other words, two backslashes in a row match a single literal backslash. Sometimes you want to accept a match from a range of characters, such as any numeric digit or any letter. Rather than forcing you to specify all of the acceptable characters individually, regular expressions allow you to define a range or set in square brackets. A, B, C in square brackets, for example, will match A or B or C. A range, such as A to Z, matches any character within that range. By preceding one of these sets with a caret, you tell the regular expression to disallow any of the characters in that set. By the way, notice that the caret does double duty. You've already seen how, in one context, it's used to anchor the start of a string, and now it's being used within a set to negate that set. The regular expression looks at how you're using the caret to determine its meaning. So my two examples both use the same regular expression and both are true because they both have a middle character that's in the set of allowed values. Here are some more matches. Kingdom is definitely a match for dot ing dom. The dot matches a single character, which in this case is just the k. Don dot jones is a match for don backslash period jones. The backslash period escapes the period character, which normally has special meaning, but since it's escaped, it represents a literal period character. User backslash domain is a match for a through z star backslash backslash a through z star, meaning any number of characters in the range a through z, followed by a literal backslash, followed by any number of characters in the range a through z. Big user guy is a match for user because the string user occurs in the middle. Big user guy is also a match for caret user, or is, is not a match for caret user because user is in the middle of the string. The caret anchors it to the beginning of the string, and that's where it looks for the match. User guy match caret user is true because in that case, user occurs at the beginning of the string. User guy match caret user dollar sign is false. Although it does match user at the beginning of the string, the dollar sign tells it to look for the end of the string, and there are more characters beyond user. User does not occur at the end of the string, so it's false. User match caret user dollar sign is true because user occurs at the beginning and end of the string. Now, having to continually define sets for common needs, such as every possible character or every possible numeric digit, would not only be cumbersome, it would make your regular expressions harder to read. So your regex can take advantage of predefined character classes to stand in for common sets or ranges that you might otherwise have had to create yourself. Note that these are case sensitive. Backslash lowercase w matches any letter or number, but not spaces or punctuation. And the uppercase w does the opposite, matching anything except letters and numbers. That's the pattern. Lowercase defines the class and uppercase is its opposite. Lowercase s is any white space character, a space, a tab, a carriage return. A lowercase d is any numeric digit. You can extend these character classes by using wildcard characters. Backslash w star, for example, matches zero or more instances of any alphanumeric character. A plus sign means a repeating pattern. So backslash w plus would mean one or more alphanumeric characters, repeating the pattern of a single character. Or in this example, it matches the pattern of the three characters I specified. Finally, a question mark matches zero or one instance of the class specified, here zero or one numeric digit. Regular expressions stop matching as soon as a non-matching character is encountered. So in this first example, only the A matches, because my regular expression is looking for a single alphanumeric character. Adding a plus sign in the second example 
allows for multiple alphanumeric characters, and so ABC matches. But the match stops at the space between ABC and XYZ because a space isn't considered an alphanumeric character. Finally, the last example matches only the space, the first alphanumeric character, non-alphanumeric character it finds. Even though I use the plus sign to allow for multiple match characters, matching stopped when it hit the X in XYZ because that's an alphanumeric character and uppercase W doesn't allow for those. Sometimes you'll want to be more specific with the matches that you'll accept. You can do that by specifying match counts in curly braces. Specify a single number to indicate exactly how many matches you want, no more, no less. Or a number and a comma sets a minimum number of matches but allows for any number beyond that. Two numbers separated by commas provides a minimum and maximum number of matches. In my first example, 1, 2, 3, 4 matches backslash D, 3, comma, 4 because there are at least three digits and no more than four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 doesn't match the same regular expression because five characters were found to match and the regular expression only allows for three or four characters. So here are some even more matches. Scriptinganswers.com dash match backslash W is true. And if we look at the matches, you'll notice that it matches just the S. It was only looking for a single alphanumeric character and that's what it found. Scriptinganswers.com match backslash W star is true and that matches the entire string scripting answers. 192.168.234.5 matches backslash D, 1 comma 3, backslash period for a literal period character, and then 1 to 3 digits, a period, 1 to 3 digits, and so forth. That's a true match. It's a pattern for an IP address. Here's the difficulty. ABC 192.168.234.5 also matches that same regular expression. You might wonder why, but think about it. It did find a pattern of one to three digits, a period, one to three digits, a period, one to three digits, a period, and one to three digits. It just found that in the middle or at the end of the string. So next time, I'll specify the same regex pattern, but I'll use a caret and a dollar sign to anchor it to the beginning and the end. This time, ABC 192.168.234.5 does not match because it didn't find that match at the beginning of the string where it was looking for it. Going back to just that IP address and keeping the same regex, we see that it's true because now the pattern matches at the beginning and the end. I want to emphasize though that it isn't testing the IP address, it's only testing the format. So 300.4.0.900 also matches. Now you might recognize that that's not a valid IP address, but we're not testing for the validity of the data. We're just testing the validity of the format, and this does match the format of an IP address. I don't want any spaces, dash match, slash s is true, because it was able to match a white space character in that string. I don't want any spaces not match, slash s, or backslash s is false because it did match, therefore not match would be false. And this is how you can use the match and not match operators for input validation. In other words, because I don't want any spaces, I look to see if my string does not match the white space class. Now I've added some color coding to this first example so that you can keep track of all the backslashes. Would you consider this to be a good regular expression for a UNC path? I have a backslash a second backslash, one or more alphanumeric characters, such as a server name, another backslash, and one or more alphanumeric characters, such as a shared folder name. In my first example, backslash, backslash, server, backslash, share, you can see that I get a match. So this seems like a good regex, but my second example shows that it isn't a good regex because it also allows x backslash, backslash, server, backslash, share. That's because the regex is floating. It's finding a match, but it's allowing extra characters not included in the match to exist also. That's why anchors are so important, as my revised color-coded regex shows. This revision forces matching to occur at the beginning of the string, so that the two backslashes must be the first characters. When writing a regex, it's just as important to test strings which should not match as it is to test those which should match. 
That way you not only make sure the regex is accepting valid strings, but you also make sure it's rejecting invalid strings. Here are some more demos using anchors in regular expressions. User at email.com is a match for backslash w star at backslash w star backslash period com. In other words, any number of letters, an at sign, any number of letters, a period, and the letters COM. Unfortunately, that same regex will also match user at email.com.com. It found the pattern it needed. Letters, an at sign, letters, a period, and com. There just happened to be an extra dot com on the end. So to prevent that from matching, we need to anchor it to the end of the string. That same user at email.com.com will not match the regex once I've added a dollar sign to the end of it. User at email.com will still match even with the dollar sign anchor because it's finding the correct pattern at the end of the string. Joe.user at email.com will also match because it's finding letters at sign letters period com at the end of the string. The Joe dot is technically extra, although it doesn't mind. At 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 joe.user at email.com will also match. The at 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 isn't what we're looking for, but we didn't anchor anything to the beginning of the regex. If I add a caret to the regex, at 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 joe.user at email.com no longer matches because it's not finding its pattern of letters at letters.com at the beginning and end of the string. Unfortunately, that also means joe.user at email.com will not match because the dot character doesn't count as an alphanumeric. So the dot joe dot portion is breaking the regex at this point. This is sort of an example of how tricky it is to write a regex it really matches email addresses correctly. The switch construct in Windows PowerShell, we covered that in the fundamentals course, offers an option to match against regular expressions. So it can take a single string or a variable that contains a string and compare it to one or more regular expressions. It will then execute, by default, every single match which is, is a match, every single regular expression which matches the string you gave it. Here's an example. Here's a switch construct where I've used the regex switch. Now, dollar sign $test is assumed to contain a string, and the various conditions in the switch construct are each regular expressions. Each regex that matches the string will cause the associated code to execute. Remember that the switch construct will evaluate each condition and will execute all of them that have a match.